Good evening, everyone. David, it's the 29th. Will you marry me? That's the yes, first question. I will. <laughs> I knew it was this setup. That's my settler question. Uh, just the nuts and bolts of something like this. How long did it take? How long have you been back? The show itself, the filming, took about 14, 15 weeks altogether. And I um, didn't do it in one go. I, um, oh. No, because I, I should have done it in one go, but I have children. But the first time your phone rang and it was put to you, mm. what were your feelings about it uh, and did you immediately accept it? I didn't immediately accept it, but I did immediately think I quite want to do this. The basic urge was essentially a travel into the unknown based once. That sounds amazing. Did you think at any point, I'm going to get kidnapped? I might not come home from this. Yeah, I did think that um, quite a lot. I, and actually, <laughs> you get a thing called a risk assessment. And it's a clever thing because it's normally about 38 pages long and presenters don't read it. No. Right? So no. I looked at it. I thought, well, it looks long. Uh, I will just assume that everything will be fine. <laughs> right? It's a story of a fish out of water, you, mm. as well as trying to tell the story uh, uh, of the Silk Road, obviously. Yeah. I, I saw the description you said of... Uh, and it's lovely, you said it was both the eBay and Amazon of the ancient world. Yeah. Is, that, is that just a nice soundbite? Is there no, truth in that? no, I mean, you know, that is, this is a soundbite to some extent, but the thing that came clear to me, and what I like very much about this series, I'm learning about the Silk Road as I go, and I'm getting animated and excited about it as I yeah. go. And the thing that I found really exciting was, and you may have known this, I didn't know this, is that it's a trade route. And once people start trading, and it's a great advert for capitalism, wherever you put it, once people start trading, they start talking. And they start yeah. talking about culture and religion and dance and music, and they start mingling in terms of well, genetics and all the rest of it. I, I, and so suddenly you see the whole modern world start to move and come together. Well, every single day you know exactly where you're going to be and what you're going no, to be saying. No, we didn't. You didn't? <laughs> oh, no, no, absolutely not. That's, that's the not point what Michael Palin told me. No, no, no. Well, yeah, but Michael Palin had more money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, definitely. And that's not how we did it. We had a, a sense of where we might go and a sense of what oh. a story we needed to tell. But, for example, in yesterday's show, we go in search of a bit of the Great Wall. I said, I think it's over there. And we go over there, and someone's built a house right by it. And he's got three dangerous dogs guarding that, his house, and they chased us off. Right? Now, really, that wasn't planned. Right? That is just happening. So I nearly die in this bit. I decide to stretch my legs, which on this terrain turns out to be a huge error. I'm told that at the top of these sand dunes here, is the best ever sunset view across the desert. <laughs> I actually will be dead before I get there, but apparently it'll still look great. I uh, do think back to the time of doing this as like incredibly emotionally sort of That's the word. sort yeah. of powering. It's sort of the power of seeing this stuff. When you interact with a, and you go out your way to you know tiny outcrops of humanity and they help you and you talk yeah. to those and they're as gracious as they can be and yeah, as they can. Yeah. What questions do they ask you? For example, the Chinese fixie was an incredibly brilliant woman called Mandy. I ended up having a long conversation with her about Mao, about this guy oh. who we think of as a mass murderer being on the yeah. banknotes. And what she said was, was that she thought that 70% of what he did was good and 30% was bad. We are told the world is a terrifying place and mm. hopefully uh, you've being there, like you say, it's, it's, re it's remote in all kinds of senses. Yeah. You didn't feel at any point, well, I'm going to be shook awake with a, a muzzle in my face. No, I, I didn't think that. Uh, but uh, other stuff happened. I mean, when we finally got to where we were going, which is a place called Bukhara, 50 degree heat, everyone got ill. I mean, everyone just collapsed and it, got yeah. seriously yeah, yeah. ill, apart from me for some reason. I mean, I got a phone call saying the director's gone to hospital from London. So, like, David, can you wake up? The director's gone to hospital. I looked out into the courtyard. I said, he hasn't gone to hospital. I can see him. He's lying in the courtyard groaning, <laughs> right, <laughs> covered in flannel. Did your Jewishness ever become an issue while you were like, because some of those areas yeah. are sensitive to that. They're, a bit, they're a bit Borat. When I'm in Bukhara, yeah. I go and see the one remaining, or the, there's a Jewish family. I'm in the toilet of the Jewish people's house. And I just want to say I'm as drunk as I've been for a long time. They gave me four vodkas and it felt impossible not to accept them. Smile! Smile. This family that I gave me a lot of vodka, they, were, <laughs> they decided to stay, they told me, because they wanted the Uzbekistani Jewish tradition to survive. That's just their house. Really? Yeah, it's basically just their house and, and the synagogue. Tomorrow's the last day and then you do pack up yeah. and go home. Mm. 
it, it, what does that feel like? Saying we've done that. Uh, mm. uh, it, 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 yes, you you want to go home, mm. but is there part of you that says I I want to go on to the next place? Yeah, there is. I mean, however much you want to come home, how much you want to see your kids, there is a part of you that that wants to see, and that's. You know, without wishing to get sentimental about it, that is the initial instinct that creates the Silk Road. But the thing that creates the Silk Road is humanity thinking, what's over that mountain? Ladies and gentlemen, David Bedeal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danny. Thank you.